currently around 5.45 in the morning. Um, my flight's actually not till midnight tonight, so I have a full day ahead of me. Um, for now, we're gonna go to the gym, get a good workout in, and then we're gonna head to work. Hopefully have a good productive day there, but yeah, let's go. So I just finished my workout. It's about 7.15 a.m. now. I got some overnight oats with frozen fruit on top for breakfast, but we're gonna go ahead and pack that up now because it's time to go to work. So we're nearing the end of the day now. It is currently 8.13 p.m. I just did a couple final checks on my bags and stuff and I'm pretty sure I'm ready to go now. So pretty soon here I'm gonna head out to the airport. The weather is looking a little grim, but hopefully we'll be okay. All right, so we just got past the security. It's about 9.35 right now, so the airport is Pretty quiet. Flight scheduled to depart in about three hours, so about 12:40. So we have a bit of time to kill, but gonna start heading to my gate now. I'm excited, guys. Hopefully you guys are too. This is gonna be fun. Alright, so after a long, boring flight, we have arrived in Toronto. Next step is to grab our bags and then go get something to eat. That's pretty much it for any vlog type content in this video. I wanted to record more but we were really busy all the time and out and about that it wasn't really convenient to do so. But I recorded a lot of b-roll footage and that's what you're going to see for the rest of the video and I'll also talk about what we did on our trip. So anyways, after we left the airport we headed downtown and dropped off our bags at a bag drop off spot and then we went to grab some breakfast. I had this eggs benny with smoked salmon and it was honestly really good but a bit on the pricier side for me. After breakfast our next stop was St. Lawrence Market, it was honestly really beautiful and they had lots of vendors for both groceries and food. I honestly thought I recorded more of the market, but it looks like this is all the footage I have. But here's Buster's Seaco, which is an established food spot within the market itself, and I got their lobster roll and fries for $24, and it was honestly super delicious. Then we got some lemon gelato for dessert. After exploring the market, it was probably around 1 p.m., and we still had a couple hours to kill before we could check into our Airbnb, so we decided to go for a bit of a walk through downtown. We made it down to the harbor, and there was this beautiful park next to it, so we decided to hang out there for a couple hours and I also took a little bit of a nap which was great because the weather was amazing.
After this, we headed to our BNB to relax and get ready for Vel the next day. I didn't record any footage of it, but it was a nice cozy spot in a small neighborhood and it was perfect for my group of six. So of course, for the next three days, we were at Veld 2023. I'm going to include a couple highlight clips of the sets that I really enjoyed. Unfortunately, I can't leave the audio in due to copyright reasons, but you guys can use your imagination for those ones. And just a quick epilepsy warning, there are going to be some flashing lights for the next little part of the video. The first big set of day one was, of course, Zed. It was truly an amazing experience listening to him play some of those classics like Clarity, Stay the Night, and The Middle. The energy was through the roof and it was honestly a great time. Then of course the main headliner of day one which was Elenium, another amazing set. It was a bit different than what I was expecting in the sense that it was a live set so it had live instruments and live vocalists instead of just him mixing on stage but nonetheless still a super enjoyable experience and I'm really glad I got to see both of these artists for the first time. Moving on to day two, here's a bit of the end of Sudden Death set, and his set was super bass heavy, demonic type headbanging stuff if that's what you're into. And then for probably my favorite set of the entire event, which is Slander. Slander was one of the main reasons why I decided to come to this event in the first place. I had really high expectations for them going into this, and they blew them out of the water. Truly a life-changing experience that I'll never forget. Then to end off day two, we got some Korean food, which was really amazing after a tiring day. Moving on to the third and final day, here's some clips of Loud Luxury, another really enjoyable set with great vibes. Finally, another artist I was really looking forward to seeing, which was the main headliner of day three, Tiesto. At some point during his set, it started raining really hard and everyone was soaking wet. As you can see there, my hair is pretty drenched, but regardless of the weather, it was still an amazing set to be at. I was really happy to see Tiesto because I've been listening to his music since I was about 13, so it's another one of those things I can cross off my bucket list. And there's me at the end of the night. The next day, our first stop was a food truck festival, and here are all the things we ate, starting with this soft shell crab, which was honestly so good. Then we have this twister sweet potato, a Jamaican patty I was too lazy to take out of the bag, some of this beef brisket, and some mango bingsu to end it off. There was a beach close to the food truck festival, so we decided to check it out, and even though the weather wasn't great that day, there were actually a good amount of people on the beach playing volleyball or just doing other beach activities. After that, we headed downtown to do a bit of sightseeing before going to our next destination, which was the aquarium. I honestly don't remember the last time I've been to an aquarium, so I was actually really excited for this, and I honestly had a great time. Here's about a minute or so of all the clips I took in the aquarium. My favorite things to see were probably the puffer fish, the jellyfish, and definitely the axolotls as well. Overall, it took us about 50 minutes to get through all the galleries, and here's what the gift shop looked like at the end. After visiting an aquarium, it only made sense for us to get sushi right after, so we headed to Kaka All You Can Eat, and I'm not even kidding when I say that this is probably the best sushi I've ever had. I was super amazed by the quality, especially for an all you can eat place, and the price was really reasonable as well, coming in at $42 per person before tax and and gratuity. Our last day in Toronto is when we decided to do all of our shopping so we headed straight to Eaton Centre and our first stop was Squishy Mart, which if you don't know already is an Asian merchandise store. They have a bunch of anime and k-pop products as well as Asian snacks, stationery and skincare. Then for lunch we grabbed some Chick-fil-A because we don't have it where we're from and then headed straight to Uniqlo right after. This Uniqlo was one of the cooler Uniqlos I've been in. It had two floors and on the second floor there was this super cool area with this mirrored ceiling. Here's some My Melody and Karomi UT for all you Sanrio lovers out there, and they even had this section where you could design and print your own shirts. We visited a couple more stores after that, but my favorite one was probably this bubble tea shop called Benke Hime. 
Just look at how cool this store is. They not only sell drinks, but they also sell things like phone cases, travel pillows, basketballs, even skateboards and surfboards. When you buy a drink, you can pay a little bit extra for a treasure option, which gives you a chance to win a mystery prize, so you already know I had to get it. Here's me opening it, I actually want a travel pillow, which I thought was really cool. Our next stop after shopping was this really fun claw machine place called Octozone. This place was honestly really cool, but whatever you do, do not ask me how much money I spent here because it will hurt my soul to answer. Anyways, we managed to spend a good hour or two at this place. Here's a clip of me trying to get this banana duck plushie, and as you can see from how skilled I am, I obviously failed to get it, but after a few tries, I did actually manage to get it as you can see here, and I also got two other plushies, this duck and this Totoro, so a successful haul if you ask me. Our final stop before leaving Toronto was Krispy Kreme Donuts, and we were all trying it for the first time. It was honestly really good, but not as amazing as I was expecting. I didn't really record any videos after that. We were pretty much all super tired and we just wanted to get home. So long story short, we headed to the airport. We all caught our flights home. I think I landed at around 1230 in the morning. So I got home at around one o'clock and I had work the next day. So that wasn't really all that fun. But yeah, overall, the trip was a lot of fun. All the activities we did, Veld especially, it was really, really enjoyable, but also really tiring. That was the first time I ever went to a three day long festival and it was definitely a lot more physically demanding than I was expecting, but still worth it in my opinion. If you guys enjoy this type of travel content, just let me know down in the comments below. I'm not going to go on any trips soon, but later on in the year as well as next year, I am going on a few trips. So those are opportunities for me to make more of this type of content if you guys want to see it. If you enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate it if you guys left a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.